Welcome guys and congratulations if you managed to get to this part because we are almost down with our mixed reality game that we are building in Unity. In this episode, I'm going to show you how we can customize the path through by changing the color, projecting it on the surface, and even using multiple path through to create this awesome flashlight effect. But I'm not done because we are then going to learn how to reveal or go through our flashlight using a stencil shader. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can publish this game in the official Meta Store, so make sure to subscribe to not miss it. As always, the source code is available on my Patreon if you'd like to support my work and even get access to exclusive content. But of course, wait, because this whole series is sponsored by Cognitive3D, an amazing tool to help you understand your player better. With Cognitive3D, you can not only watch replay of your player player, get super comprehensive data about their session, but you can know if your game meets your objective with its objective system and so much more, so don't wait any longer and go register for free with the link you will find in the description. Now just saying, I've also made a previous tutorial about this tool on this channel, but without further ado, let's get started. Okay, and here we go, let's get started with the flashlight effect that you saw in the introduction of these videos and that will teach you a lot about customizing the path through. But of course, for this flashlight effect, we need a flashlight 3D model and lucky for me, I found this nice looking one on the asset store that you will be able to download with the link you will find in the description. Now after logging, we can simply click here on open in Unity, open Unity editor to open here the package manager with this asset. We can then click on import to import it on this project. And here is everything that the package contains. We can then click on import to add everything. Beautiful. Now we can close this window. And as you can see, we have this new folder that is showing now in this project and that will contain the flashlight asset. If we go to flashlight gold, we can see here the flashlight over there, but there is a big issue. And of course, the big issue is that everything is pink. The reason is that all of these shaders are using the standard pipeline and not the universal rendering pipeline like we are using for this project. But worry no more because it's very easy to fix this. Let's first click on the flashlight folder over there, then click here on material and here for the search, let's search for everything that is inside the flashlight. This will, as you guessed it, select all of the material that are under here, the flashlight folders. And now what's left is to select them all by pressing on the caps key and then go to edit, rendering, materials, convert selected built-in materials to URP and then proceed. And as you can see, by doing this, we have changed the shader of all of the materials and this actually kept the same texture as before. So one thing left and it is to reset here the search, go to the flashlight goal and drag here the flashlight prefab inside the hierarchy. And as you can see, we can see our beautiful flashlight over there. Now, as you can see on the children of this flashlight, we have a white light, which is just a spotlight that will show some light in the forward direction of the flashlight for a nice effect. And as you can see, there is also a cookie which will show here this pattern on the surface that the light hit. Now, anyway, what we want is for the flashlight to follow our left hand. So I'm going to go under the camera rig and drag the flashlight as the child of the left hand and core. Beautiful, but you can see that the flashlight is on the opposite direction. So let's simply press on E. Then while pressing on the control key, I will rotate 180 degrees. And this is the final result for the rotation. And as you can see, it is pointing here the flashlight in this direction. I'm also going to move the flashlight a little bit forward. And now everything should be good. Let's save and click on play to find out how this is looking. And there you go. This is what you should see. As you can see, the flashlight is now following my left hand and it is looking real nice with here on the right hand, the ray gun. I can even do this to light up the ray gun. But now it is time to show you what we can do with the path through. Now, the issue in my case is that because I'm recording here right now, the path through is not displayed within the Unity editor. So what I'm going to do for you to see uh, the path through is to cast my device directly using the oculus.com slash casting website. Now, anyway, if I go back to Unity there, if you remember, we added a path through for our game in the first episode with here, these building blocks that contain the OVR path through layer. But what I didn't told you at the time, there are settings to uh, tweak here the look of the path through 
for example, with here the color control. So let me show you what it looks like if I click on play. There you go, this is what I can see, but if I take here the OVR pass through layer, you can see that with the color control, I can change, for example, the color control to color adjustment. And look at what happens. We can change the contrast, the brightness, but also the saturation. And there are so much more than the color adjustment. As you can see, there is the grayscale to color, the color LUT, and the blender color LUT. Now, anyway, this is just to show you how we can figure here the look of the path through. As you can see, to have this kind of result, you can even click here to have edge rendering, which will, as you can see, add some edges to the path through. Now, anyway, in my case, I'm going to remove here the edge rendering. Maybe set the brightness to this value and then copy this component. And now we can leave play mode to go back to the path through, right click and paste back the component value that we saved during playtime. And this way we are able now to customize the look of the path through using the color control and the edge rendering. But that's not all, because as you can see, we have also another setting here called the projection surface. Now by default, it is set to reconstructed, which means that it will be displayed around a big sphere around the player. But what if we wanted to display this path through only on one particular mesh? And this is what I'm going to do with the flashlight currently. For example, here I have the flashlight and I'm going to search for cone. Here I'm setting it to everything. You should see here this cone 3D mesh that is within the Meta XR SDK package. Now we can simply drag it as a child of the flashlight. And here it is, we can see it. Maybe we can rotate it 180 degrees and place it in front of the flashlight, like so. There you go, this seems good. We can maybe increase a little bit the size and change everything how we want. There you go, this looks nice. And as you guessed it, we are going to use the mesh of this cone for the path through. And this is very simple to do. We can simply go to the path through and here instead of reconstructed, let's set it to user define. And as you can see, we have here the projection surface that we can set for this path through, which instead of displaying the path through to all sphere, will display the path through on one particular object. So let's click on the plus button, drag the mesh model that contains the mesh filter over there. And because we are updating the transform, let's set here the update transform. Now, in our case, we want to display the path through. So we don't want to show here the mesh renderer material. So let's simply go to the mesh one model under the cone and disable the mesh renderer. And now by doing this, we should be able to show the path through only through this cone following our flashlight. And there you go. As you can see, it is working. The path through is only showing through the flashlight that is over here. And I really, really like this effect already. As you can see, in a matter of a few seconds, we were able to just tweak the surface that we are using to show the path through. So after changing the color of the path through, we are now able to project it on a custom surface. But what about the rest? What if we still wanted to display another path through where the flashlight is not showing? And this is what's possible with the composition depth. So if we select our path through over there, what we can do is simply rename it path through flashlight and then duplicate it with Ctrl D. We can even remove the building blocks over there, remove the building blocks component here and rename this one path through background. There you go. And now in this case, we want to set the projection surface to reconstructed to be displayed around the player. And for the color, what I like to do is instead of 0.2, we can set it to minus 0.2. Same goes for the saturation. And we can even reduce a little bit the opacity to turn this path through a bit more darker than the other one. And there we go. Now at this point, we have two path through. We have one path through that will be projected on, on the cone following the flashlight model and another path through for that will surround the player. But how can we know the order between these two path through? Which one of these two should be displayed in front? And this, we can tweak it with here the composition depths. So as you can see, the smaller number will appear in front. So in our case, what we want to do is set the path through background to one. This way, the path through for the flashlight will be less because it has a value of zero. And this means that the path through from the flashlight will always be displayed in front. Now everything should be ready. Let's find out if this works by clicking on play. 
and there you go guys look at how cool this effect is as you can see the flashlight is working and within the cone of the flashlight we are displaying a bright path through but outside of it we are displaying a darker one i really think this effect looks really really nice but look at what's happening right now we have still the ghost showing anyway so i think a nice touch that you can do is also only display the ghost where they are shown through the flashlight okay guys so we already made one cool effect with this flashlight but right now with this flashlight except of this cool effect we are not doing much so i think it would be really nice if we could only reveal the ghosts where they are shown through the flashlight so let's find out how we can make this effect now anyway you might probably already know how to make this effect from my tutorial on how to make a path through and it is using a stencil shader so if you want to get more information about how a stencil shader works go watch that video first but anyway let's get started on making our reveal effect now if we go to the settings you should see here some urp settings these urp settings are used if we go to edit project settings and then if you go here to graphics you should see here that the urp high fidelity is being used currently so what we can do is let me just resize this window a little bit if we highlight it it will show you where it is in the project so we can click on it now you can see that this urp high fidelity is using for the renderer list this renderer and this is actually the item it is showing now here the high fidelity renderer is where we can create our stencil effect now by the way if you have here the screen space ambient occlusion it is really bad for vr so let's simply disable it it will be much 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 better now anyway for the stencil effects let me go to the prefab then we can drag here our ghost over there in the scene and we can move it maybe in front of the cone beautiful now the secret is to first set the ghost to a new layer so let's click here and then on add layer we can call this one ghost beautiful we can go back to the ghost layer and set the layer to ghost and we want to change the children so let's say yes okay now that we've changed the layer to ghost what we can do is go to the high fidelity renderer and now for the opaque layer we can remove the ghost there we go let's do this the same for the transparent layer and as you can see our ghost has disappeared of course because it is not part of the filtering right there but don't worry because we are going to add it back within the renderer feature so let's click on add renderer features render objects we can rename this one stencil opaque one beautiful we can set the event after rendering the opaque for the queue let's set it to opaque for the layer mask let's use our ghost and then we can use a stencil by clicking over there for the value i'm going to set it to one there you go now for the compare function what we want to do is set the compare to equals and we can keep the rest like this now this is for the stencil opaque but as you can see it has done nothing on our ghost because our ghost is still not showing and this is because our ghost is transparent so let's fix this by doing this as well for a transparent layer so let's click on add renderer features render object let's rename it stencil transparent one let's set the, the queue to transparent after rendering the transparent let's rewrite the stencil set it to one like before and set the compare value to equal and of course i forgot to set here the layer mask to then ghost but as you can see our ghost is still not showing because if i for example change the compare function to not equal you can see that now it appears and because we are setting here the compare function to equals it means that the ghost will only appears when it is being shown through another stencil that has a value of one so at this point the only thing that is remaining is to create another stencil that has a value of one and you guessed it we will assign it here to our flashlight so if we go to our flashlight we can go as a child that we still have here if i re-enable the mesh renderer we can still see it over there but right now the mesh renderer is using a default material which has no stencil value so this is not good because it won't make our ghost appear now instead what i'm going to do is use here a custom shader that i made which is called the valem tutorial stencil now if i double click on it you can see that this shader is super super short 
And basically the only thing that it does is, as you can see, write a certain stencil value. Now anyway, you will be able to find this shader in the file under this video in the description down below. And what I'm going to do is actually right click on the asset create material. I'm going to set this one stencil mask one. And what we can do is change this shader by searching to stencil. And here is the stencil that we want, the Valem tutorial shader. There you go. Now we can simply go back to our cone, drag the stencil mask over there. And as you can see, it has turned the material to transparent because it is doing nothing more than writing some stencil value. But as you can see, the ghost is still not appearing. And the reason is that the stencil ID is set to zero here. But watch what happens when I set it not to zero, but to one. Our ghost is now showing. And as you can see, the effect is working because if I take the flashlight, parent and that I try to move it, you can see that it actually revealed the goat, which is looking really, really great. And this is going to be awesome in mixed reality. Now, anyway, before finishing everything, what you want is to override here the ghost and click on apply all. This will make sure to apply the layer ghost to the prefab. We can now select it and press on the delete key to remove it. But there is still one issue before we can finally test our game. And it is that if we go to our ray gun, you can see that the layer mask of the ray gun is set to default, which means that it will only collide with the default layer. And which means that we won't be able to shoot our ghost anymore. So make sure here to add as well the ghost in this list. And there you go. Now one thing to do, and it is to build our game to find out how it is working. Oh, and okay, as you can see, our effect is not working at all. So let me show you how we can actually fix this problem in Unity once and for all. Now, anyway, if we go back to Unity and as we go to edit project settings, they're not in the graphics, but on the quality, we can see the issue. The issue is that we have multiple quality level. This means that in some cases, instead of using the high fidelity renderer that is currently over there, it will use another one. But we have made this all high fidelity render effect with the stencil opaque and transparent for the highest fidelity and not for the other. So let's simply remove here the performant and the balance one to only keep the high fidelity renderer that we used. And now anyway, let's close this windows. And with this problem fixed, everything should be working now. And there you go guys, look at how cool the flashlight effect is looking in mixed reality. And now that we can only reveal the ghost through the flashlight, this is actually changing everything. The game is so much more challenging. Now, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you are ready for the next one. A big shout out to the new Patreon which are appearing on the screen right now. If like them you want to get access to the source code of this game and other exclusive content, join us, the link is in the description. A big shout out to Cognitive 3D, the sponsor of this whole series. So if you'd like to know more about your game and your player, go and try the tool for yourself with the link you will find in the description. Thank you for watching and see you soon, bye bye.